Facebook. Let's see if it takes us to the right place. Okay. Ooh, okay. Take all night. No. Okay, fingers crossed. <laughs> it's been so, so odd lately. I don't know if it's going to go. Let's see. It's spinning and spinning and spinning. Oh, it actually went through. Oh, I think we're going to go long. Awesome. Okay, let's see. Okay, we'll add the title later. Okay, so it looks like some kind of, the weather here has been amazing. It's really unfortunate that you're not here. <laughs> I don't know what it's like in, in Scotland right now, but um, it's like well, 80 we had, degrees. We've been actually having some actual strange weather. It's been really nice. Normally it could be still a little bit cold just now, but the sun has actually been blessing us. So we're making the most of it. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's nice to have the warmth. Um, oh, we are live. Oh, excellent. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to this beautiful day in New England. Everybody who's in New England, I hope you're all enjoying this gorgeous May day. Um, welcome to Spiritual Cafe Live, where we walk together and support each other on the path to becoming more spiritually aware, enlightened, and inspired. Uh, my guest today is Dominic Bogue, all the way from Scotland. Hi, Dominic. So Hi, glad you could be here. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, so glad. And I know that you, you were supposed to be in New England right now. So yeah, well, get you over here. <laughs> yeah, something happened. I don't know what, but <laughs> so, um, but, the, the, you know, with the luck of having uh, technology, you can still visit New England electronically. So this is great. So, um, so how have you been? How have you, are you working a lot from home? Are you, are you obviously you're not serving the churches um, like you normally do within the church. Are you doing them um, remotely? Well, thankfully, you know, I'm still able to, to connect to my clients. I'm still able to do some work from home, which, you know, is a blessing. And um, definitely I've been doing some, some online services for some of the churches. And it's really bizarre because it's not something I ever thought would actually happen or we'd be doing. So it's different times, but it's great just to see how things are moving forward and how we're evolving as well. So just keeping busy and doing my part to, to help wherever I can. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. It's good that you're still able to do all the work that you can do. But so, it'd be nice to have you back here in Boston, though. So eventually you'll get here. <laughs> August is coming. August is coming. <laughs> yes. Are you are you coming in August? Are you hoping Fingers to? Crossed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. Be in Maine. Oh, that would be fabulous to see you. It'd be awesome. Um, so. So to, uh, for people who don't know you, uh, how did you get into this work? Obviously, like I always say to the mediums that I interview on this is, you know, we never wake up one morning and say, I want to grow up and be a medium. Oh, <laughs> so so what, what was your thoughts when you were younger? Did you want, is this what you wanted to do? Abs absolutely not. Um, I always grew up wanting to actually um, be a police officer, believe it or not. Uh -huh. um, but when uh, my father passed away suddenly when I was 14, and it was the first death that I ever had to experience, um, didn't know where he was, didn't know what death truly was, and didn't actually truly understand what spirit was or, or anything like that. And uh, shortly after dad passed, maybe within the, the same week that dad had passed, he actually, um, what we would call maybe a visitation. And I became aware of this sensation in my room, really changed, became cold, hair stood up in the back of my, my neck, my hands, wow. and I could hear him. So I gently turned reluctantly and there he was, Laura, just like you and I can see each other now. Really? And um, we had maybe a moment of, of time talking, discussing, and um, after that he went. So I kept that all to myself. And I would say that was a moment where Dominic woke up. That was my awakening to the mediumistic side of me. And um, I went to a, a spiritualist church because my mum and my sister had attended a spiritualist church and uh, my dad had came through and gave a message to the medium, to my mum my, my and my sister, and basically says to them that uh, your son can hear the voices of the spirit and he needs to be developed. And at that point, I didn't want to tell my mum because I felt she was still grieving. I didn't want her to think I was crazy. And to be honest, was I, Dominic, just wanting to hold on to that last piece of my dad? 
I didn't really know. So when she came back from that spiritualist church and says to me that evening, as if, do you have anything you want to tell me? And I'm like, nope. Anything <laughs> you want to say? I'm like, nope. What about your dad? I'm like, nope. So I was very like putting it away. And then she, she unfolded and she says to me, well, we went to the spooks, as it was called, the spiritualist church. And the medium had said that dad had came and said and done. And I'm like, okay. So then I gently unfolded that I had seen dad and this is what he had told me. And I think it just left my mum with a raised eyebrow for a while. So the following week, I went to the spiritualist church. Now, bear in mind, I was 14 years of age. Yeah. I should be out in the streets playing, you know, catch or football or something with, a, with my friends. But I went to the church and I said to my mum my and my sister, you sit down the front and I'll sit at the back just so that they don't know we're together in case they try to link us together, you know, skeptic. And uh, at the end, the medium had said, and to the young boy at the back, your father's here and he's telling me that I have to help you, I have to train you and I will help develop your gift. And I kind of sunk down the chair like, are you talking to me? And she says, yes, you sitting at the back. And I'm like, okay. And ever since then, I, uh, I went to the, the development circle the following week and uh, it led on. So I started to sit in development circle for three nights a week and attended church one, one night a week. So four nights I dedicated my youth uh, to being a medium. And uh, by 16, I was serving platform and uh, I had people asking me um, behind the scenes to do uh, sittings for them. So kind of moved quite quick. Yeah, my gosh. And that's like, I mean, at 14, all people want to do is fit in. They don't want to stand out, right? <laughs> they just want to, to hang out with their friends. And, and so um, obviously there was a progression that happened here. Like, how did you make peace with that? Just by moving it was, forward? Well, it was, a, it was a difference. So it's almost like Dominic had to understand the new version of who Dominic was because things were things were strange you know and you know yourself being intuitive you know you can just know things or you'll think about someone and then they'll turn the corner there they are strange things like that would happen and um i just had to understand well what truly is going on with me and i'm so grateful that i did have the local spiritualist church and that i did have the development from another senior medium who did have experience to help me understand and come to terms with what truly is a medium and that spirit is actually our loved ones but just in a different consciousness so I had to understand that in a very quick way but when things moved forward very quickly it helped make it easier to process as well it didn't stop the grieving and it didn't stop me wanting to wake up and have it all as a dream and have my father still there but it helped me understand that okay he may not be here physically but he is here in a different form. I want to get to know that different form. So I had to not just get to know me, but try to understand what the mediumistic side of me was as well. So the process didn't change. I just had to fit in with the different process and try to understand it. And uh, I had great support around me. And uh, thankfully, touch wood on that, it was a great support that really helped me move forward. I guess you could say having people eventually believe in you that I'm not crazy and the voices that I do hear are actually people's loved ones and that I'm not going insane because trust me, there's a fine line between communication and imagination. So I had yes. to make sure that I wasn't slipping somewhere that maybe I wasn't going to come back from. Well, you definitely come across as you know, very grounded to me. So I, I imagine that, you know, you must have, they, people must have, who really knew you at that point must have known, well, he's fairly grounded. He must be all right. <laughs> Well, it's funny because obviously, again, still being young, I was, I was still in school, I was going through my exams and uh, my friends, they would say, well, are, are, are you coming out to play on Tuesday? And Tuesday would be circle night and I'd be like, no, uh, I've, got some, I've, I've got something on, I'm going to visit my grandparents because I didn't want to tell my friends in school <laughs> that I'm going to sit with a bunch of old ladies to let <laughs> dead people you know? So I kept a lot of that to myself. And the strange thing is a lot of people, and you know yourself going back, people yeah. didn't really talk about all these things. And I was starting to recognize people in the congregation, like, I'm sure she works in the school, or I know her daughter. So then they were spotting me and it was like, do we say hello? 
you know. So eventually it, it did start to come out. Um, and, you know, being in, from such a small community, fi- you know, fire spreads very quick, same as, same as gossip or, or information. So when the new kid on the block was coming along, everyone wanted to know. So I guess having great support really did nourish me. So absolutely. And my friends, well, you know, they probably still think I'm crazy, um, but they are still very supportive. So yeah. it'll always be those people. <laughs> Keep us grounded, right? <laughs> Keeping it real. That's right. Um, so since, I mean, obviously, it's, so it's about half your life now, you've been a, a working medium, essentially. Yeah, uh, 14 years. Well, I'm, I'm 20, I'm 29 this year. But because of the virus, it's taken a lot of a year away. So I, I think I'll just stay 28 instead of <laughs> a year. You know, I don't think it's fair. But yeah, I'll be 29 this year. So yeah, yeah a long awesome. time. <laughs> So what, what can you suggest? I mean, obviously, most of the mediums that I know, they've woken up later in life. You know, they've, they started families, they got married, they had a full-time job for many years and things like this. I mean, obviously, this has been a big part of your adult life. Um, what can you suggest to young people who feel like they're opening up mediumistically? Um, Life, life itself changes and um, it's important to, you know, come into this world just being true to yourself and just being you first and foremost and not allowing anyone to tell you what's right, what's wrong, what religion or what God or what Bible or Quran you should read. You should be able to find your own growth and, you know, we're coming into a place where mediumship, spirituality, psychics, intuition, tarot cards, everything nowadays is a lot more, you know, accepted than maybe what it was before. So any young person um, coming into this type of uh, awakening and movement, I would say embrace it. Embrace it because you're going to be a light for the next generation. And if you can carry that light, just think of the people that you may be able to help as you go into it. And, you know, people will be watching and saying, well, I may be waking it up, but you know, I don't want to do it professionally or I don't want to do it. That's okay. But think of the people that you can still help, support, guide, or connect with their loved ones along the way. And it's a good, to me, it's a great, it's, this isn't a career. It's not a job. It's not a hobby. It's a way of life that we do. Yeah, we, I, could, is. I, I could have cho- chosen um, a different religion or a different belief system. Well, I couldn't really because I didn't have much of a choice, did it? It chose me. But, you know, I chose to allow it to, to, to still unfold with me. And, you know, it becomes a way of life. And it really, for me, it's helped me truly understand the true essence of who Dominic is and where my part in life in this big, bad world, where I fit in. So just embrace it. Any young people, just embrace it. And if you have any grandparents or any children out there that maybe are seeing kids maybe unfold in their intuition or their their psychic abilities or anything, nourish them. Just nourish them and just treat them as a normal person. Because if it's meant to be, it will be. And if it's not, it won't. So just nourish them. But you're not crazy. Definitely (laughs) not. That's the bottom line. Not crazy. (laughs) A bit crazy. Um, so for someone who may have heard the beginning of your story, when you saw your dad in your room after he crossed, um, what do you say to someone who may not have this, these, this, as strong mediumistic abilities as you have, um, who is really, really wanting that kind of connection with a, a, lo- a loved one who's moved on and they just want to see them. They want to have that last moment. And, you know, most of us don't have that, you know, we may go to a medium, we may have a sense of them around, we may get signs around, but um, if someone says, well, I really want that for myself because I'd love to see my dad again. Uh, what, what kind of advice can you give to them without, you know, without having them lose hope? Well, t- t- uh, someone asked me uh, in a class I was teaching last week, like, do you always see your father? Does he always communicate with you? And the reality is, no, no, I don't. And people say, well, if you're a medium, surely you must be able to connect to your loved ones or do this. 
To a certain extent, yes, but there's a moment within mediumship when we communicate with the, the spirit world where we have to ensure that there is a communication that's, that's coming forward or an intelligence. And I think if we, as a medium, trying to connect to our loved ones, still hold that emotional bond, we need to make sure that we are not trying to create a communication under our own hope or our own grieving. So please don't think that, you know, just as mediums are able to 0800 to dial a dad and say, hey, how's it going? You see, unfortunately, we don't. We have to still look for the signs and we, we have to have our trust. We feel our loved ones around, but it's not a direct conversation um, the way that we would like or the way it would be for a medium. For people who are maybe going through loss or struggling to deal with, uh, you know, grieving and maybe they didn't have that moment to say goodbye, well, I would certainly say to you, look for the signs around you. But one thing that, that I do, Laura, quite a lot, to be honest, is when I am missing dad, um, we, we have a, a, a memorial. Um, but my father was a professional soccer player, so we've got lots of cuttings and lots of bits and pieces from newspaper articles and things. And when I miss him, I just take a moment on my own and I just sit and I, I look through the old photographs and I then just go into that space and feel him present. You know, and that's something that we can all do, even if you're not mediumistic, is just take a moment to just gather your thoughts and just send out that, that invitation. You know, mum, I miss you. Dad, I miss you. Son, I miss you. And just be present and feel within your own soul that communication and that connection from the spirit. But what I would say is, you may think, well, is there life after death? Or where is the proof? Or where where does it lead? Or am I going to have false hope? You have to go and experience. I always say that to, to everyone. You need to experience. You have to find your own experience to what you can father of being through. So Spiritualist Church for me was where I got my evidence. That's where I got my proof and my connection that then led me into something greater. So if there is people who are looking to get a communication or are hoping to receive some form of contact from a loved one, a spiritualist church or a medium, go and, go and try. And all you can do is go into that experience with an open heart, but don't go with an expectation because he who goes in with an expectation can leave disappointed. So don't expect anything. Just go in with an open heart and just say, I am open to receiving. Are you there? Are you with me? Be, be welcome. So that's all we can do. It's an experiment all the time we try to communicate as well. There's no guarantee. Oh, absolutely. And there's always a bigger picture happening anyways, because, absolutely. you know, you may walk into a, a spiritual service and maybe five times in a row and never get a message, but yeah. there's, there's, some, there's a process happening that we may not be aware of. Of course, even like I've seen times where maybe if I'm in a spiritualist church, I will take friends or students or wherever, and it'll be them that gets the communications. And, you know, it could be like, I'm like, Dad, it's your birthday. Please come through. No. Nope. Uh, Dad, I miss you. It's my birthday. No. Nope. Or I could go to mediums and it's always that they'll try to give me a grandma or a grandpa. And my grandparents are still alive. So it's because I'm so young that they will try to avoid the this is your father situation. So I cannot sit here and say that I have been able to be blessed with, you know, wonderful communications from mediums from my own experience. I've, I've just had to trust the process. And what I've learned through the years is, well, if I've been able to communicate and give, you know, people, um, clients or whatever, if I've been able to connect with their dads or their mums or sons or husbands, and if they're okay, then I know my dad's all right. He's got me this far. He best get me continued. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always say. If you if you can go to a group reading and and you know you don't get a reading yourself, that by seeing others get that that connection can really be healing. And to we know everybody's okay. I always say to people, you know, you you're a part of uh, whoever does receive a reading. You're a part of their reading. You've helped that yeah. magic happen by just being present. So although, um, let's face it, Laura, you and I, were, we're, we're the same. We will go into a group reading or a, or a gala or a church hoping, oh, it'd be nice if we receive. It'd be good if we can get a contact. And if we don't, we don't. But we, being present, builds that communication. We are part of that communication that has allowed that spirit to have that chance to communicate with their loved ones. So it might not have been our turn that time, maybe next time. Yes, that's a great way to look at it. Exactly. If people recognize that 
you know, they may go in with the hopes, you know, come on in if you can come in to say hello, but to recognize that, that just their presence in that space does build up that energy to, um, to get the message to the person who needs it that night. Yeah. So, yeah. Or that evening. Whatever. So, um, so I just wanted to mention really quickly, uh, Dominic and I will be working together online next week, June 5th, uh, in the evening, 7 o'clock Eastern time uh, with Lori Sheridan. We're going to be doing an online fundraiser. Um, there's, a, there's this church in uh, Mar uh, Hudson, Marlborough area that I've been doing fundraisers for for the past few years. And um, so we had one planned and uh, it was going to be myself that I invited Lori to come join me. That was supposed to happen uh, a little while ago, and then all this happened. So we decided to take it online and say, hmm, who else can we invite that we wouldn't normally be able to have join us? I said, Dominic. <laughs> so luckily, Dominic came on to, um, to help us with this fundraiser, and all the funds will be going to help not only the Unitarian Church of uh, Marble and Hudson, which is an all-inclusive Unitarian church um, that helps support the local community, spiritually and also they asked who else would you like to have benefit from this fundraiser and i was asked if we could um, help with the historic spiritualist um, project up in hydesville new york that janet nohavik from the journey within church in new jersey is supporting or she began it actually um she's she started this restoration project um yeah, which sure. is where yeah, which is where uh, spiritual was spiritualism was born was in um the hydesville area so um so he, she's building this legacy of, of history for the spiritual the legacy community. going. Keeping yeah. Such yeah, a you, part to spiritualism. Exactly. And yeah, you're definitely a big part of, of the spiritualist community where you are and also here in New England. You, you come here quite a bit to support yeah. the spiritualist churches in, in this area. So, um, so we'll just keep going. <laughs> so if anybody like, yeah. So if anybody like to um, to join us that night on June fifth, uh, you just go to my website laurelwister.com, go to events, and it's under there. And it's only fifteen dollars, and it goes to support half will go. Um, we're not getting anything from this. Half of it will go to the Unitarian Church of Marlboro and Hudson, and the other half will go to the Restoration Project in Hydesville, New York. Um, so I'm, I'm so excited to be working with you, Dominic. This is it's really going to be fun. fun. It's going to be fun. You know, we've known each other now for a few years now, but we've never been able to, to work together, you know, your schedule, my schedule. So it's going to be fun. And, yes. uh, you know, online or in person, we will make it happen. So um, people watching, they, they'll be able to, to look at their time zones and, you know, because they can join from anywhere, Laura, can't they? So exactly. they can be a part of it. Yep, and they, any, if you have a computer, if you have computer access and access to a Zoom uh, meeting, you absolutely can join us. So, uh, just it's only fifteen dollars, and uh, so we've we've done this before for another uh, fundraising event um, myself, and it works out pretty well. I was a little skeptical at first. I'm like, oh, how's this going to work? It's like we're, it's we, you and I were talking before we went on the air about how we miss kind of being in front of a group. Yeah. You know, and it, it nothing really beats that energy of, of feeling that. But I got to tell you, I still felt it. Um, so it didn't, it wasn't that much, I mean, it is nice to see people and kind of be, sit in that energy in the space, yeah. but I still could feel it. Of so, course. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, I, I, um, I've always been able to, to well, maybe on uh, Facebook Live, if I was doing any many readings or whatever for, for any of the, my followers, but when um, the, 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 the First Spiritualist Church of, of Onset um, had asked me to do um, their, their online service and then the messages for the church, I was like, oh is this going to be possible am i going to be able to do it and i you know we just trust spirit and laura i kid you know i'm not one for for blowing my own trumpet because it's spirit that do the work we just be the the channel but they were so so accurate you know and just so like they knew what we needed as a medium to deliver and i'm talking like names addresses they were just coming right out with it wow. and i'm pinching myself like why could it not be like this when we were in person all the time, you know? But they could see where Dominic was feeling vulnerable. Dominic wasn't sure if this was going to work. This was a new thing. So to me, I just feel like they wrapped their self around me. They wrapped their presence around me and we just went into a space that was what was needed. And it, it was just amazing. So it truly does work. It absolutely does. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's like, I mean, here's a great question for you. Cause I, I've, um, you know, I've been working with some students um, for a few years, so they've been maybe a year or two into it, into, you know, really earnest um, studying. Yep. So how, what kind of advice can you give to students who are who've been studying for about a year or two, 
to build that trust with spirit, that, that trust that you have, that spirit is just going to show up and wrap it, wrap themselves around you and, and, um, and be there for you and fully present for you. And then how, how can you, what can what do you suggest? Well, what are, you know, it's, that's, that's one of the biggest things for us as mediums, isn't it? Is being able to yeah. have trust and to have that confidence that it's going to work, you know? Um, yeah. And I've, I've always been a true believer that if we as a medium extend our hand to the spirit, they will extend the hand back. So if we are given a son an opportunity to communicate with his mother, he's going to take that opportunity. If we say to the spirit world, I am here for you, I work for you, I'm here for you, they will come. And I say to my students, they within the world of spirit are as desperate to communicate with us as we are to them. So it's the same, like they probably think, is the medium going to be able to connect with me? We as mediums, are we going to be able to connect with them? Where I built my trust and where I built my confidence was actually just putting it to practice. So every time uh, that I had an opportunity to practice on someone that I did not know, I lit up like a Christmas tree. I was so excited, I was like, oh, because well, I look at it as an adventure. I look at it as a yeah. journey of the spirit. Yeah. You know? I, I know mediums that get themselves so nervous. I, I know mediums who are back and forth from the bathroom before they go. And I'm like, guys, just stop thinking about it. Just don't, don't, don't even put it into your mind. Just move into that space when the time's right. Because what we're going to do is we're going to start creating mental blocks. We're going to get ourselves nervous and sick. And I worry that that's going to create a negative space rather than the positive that we need. But practice, practice, practice. Obviously, there's that saying, practice makes perfect. You know, there's no right. such thing as a perfect communication. But it's true. You know, the more you practice, the more familiar that you and the spirit get. Because what it really is, Laura, if you think on it, is it's a relationship that the medium has to build with the spirit. You know, I would come home from, from circle and my mum's um, neighbours, her girlfriends, when, when dad passed, they used to come in to sit with her just so she had company and, you know, try to get her through. And the, there would be three of them all sitting around the kitchen table. And I would come home at maybe 9 or 9.30 at night. And they would, first thing they would say, what did you learn? What do you need to practice tonight? So then I would come home from what I learned that in circle that night. And then I was able to practice on them. You see, so... It's, it's, it's all about practice and you've just got to go into every experience just trusting that if you extend your hand to them, they will extend it back to you. It's a learning process and just trusting that relationship that you will build with the spirit that will unfold into something magical. Yeah, yeah. And it is. It is a process too of getting to that point where you're just Absolutely. letting go of the judgment of yourself and how you know, a lot of people are going to judge your work and um, just, I mean, we never quite let go of that. <laughs> <laughs> of course not but there becomes a point where you say you know look at what good i am doing look at what great i have been able to deliver um because you're given that spirit an opportunity to have, to have a voice again you know so there comes a point where, where maybe it's just me and maybe being young and cocky i'm just like to hell with it i don't care what she thinks or he thinks of me the most important person and my moment and within my vision is that mother that's sitting in that audience who is missing her daughter. That's my important person at that moment. You know, right. so there becomes a point where you, you realize what you're doing and what your purpose is and where your healing is truly coming from. Because that's the true purpose of what we do, Laura, isn't it? Is to try to heal both parts of life to help continue moving forward. So if we are doing something wrong by trying to heal those who are grieving, then something's wrong here, isn't it? So just don't, do our don't, best. <laughs> don't, don't sit in judgment. Don't, don't even allow anyone to affect you through your, your development. Just go and give yourself the opportunity to open up and unfold. And just, I always say, throw caution to the wind, but make sure you're having fun. I always say to my students, if you're not having fun, stop. You know, it's yeah. like that, that advert that's on for the, the, the radio, when gambling's not fun, stop. It's the same as when mediumship, if you're not having fun within your mediumship, stop, something's wrong. Yeah, that's it's true. Fun, you know, because it's a yeah. union, it's a reunion of, of, of spirit. I always say, you know, if I can heal hearts and reunite families, then job done. Exactly. I always say, show up, have fun. It's, an, it's like I always say, it is an adventure. Every, every reading is an adventure. And, um, and let go of the variables that you have no control over, because there's always going to be something. 
Yeah. yeah, you know, we always do that, don't we, as humans? We try to focus on what we don't have control over opposed to what we do have control over. And there comes a fine line, and I believe that that's something that we have grown to, to understand is to learn how to change little parts of us, the human parts of us that maybe we think is normal by saying, you know what, I'm just going to trust the universe, I'm just going to trust my God, and I'm just going to trust my loved ones that everything will go to plan. But before that, I would be looking to where I've got control. I'd be like, how can I fix it? What can I do? Now I just, it'll be fine. It'll be what it'll be. So that's the spiritual part where Dominic has evolved, you know? That's true. Like it, yeah, I, yeah, I would totally relate to that. It's like, it is what it is. It's, it's what's it supposed to be. It's what it is, you know? Can't it is be what it is. Anything <laughs> less. Yes, exactly. Um, so if anybody would like to have a reading with Dominic, um, your website's dominicbogue.com, correct? Yes. Okay, so it's B-O-A-G, dominicbogue.com. Great, and you can talk to anybody over the, all over the world, as I'm sure you're finding <laughs> recently. Yeah, well, the world of technology, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Preferably if they're English speaking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. So reach out of, yeah. Language, yeah. <laughs> what was that? I've not mastered any other language yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, have you read, ever tried to read for anybody who spoke a different language? I, you know, I have. Uh, you know, I've, I've read for some people who um, have got, you know, good English, but obviously they may be Italian or um, Indian, you know, whatever, whatever different cultures they are. You know, sometimes, especially if they're loved ones in the world of spirit, still have that lingo or, or that language that they once had. And when they try to come forward with the clear audience and you're like, I don't know what she's saying. So we then <laughs> use the, the clairsentient or we try to get the clairvoyance to come in. And, you know, I've only done it twice, twice in my whole career that I've been able to just send to myself and listen to the Clare audience. And one time in a spiritualist church back here in the, the UK, I was able to actually give a lady's mum's address in, in Italian by listening to what she said. So I tried to listen and deliver it back word for word. And she gasped and she stood up in the church and she says, that's my mum's address in, in Italy. How do you know that? I'm like, well, I don't, you just told me. And I was flabbergasted, but you know, it's, it's, you just, I just go with it, you know, just, let's just see what we can do. Isn't it, isn't it awesome to just have those moments where you like, it's almost like you're the observer as it's happening and you just step back and go, wow, how did that happen? Because although we, although we are doing the work in a sense, we are listening, we are delivering, sometimes, you know, Lauren, I'm sure you're the same when you're in that zone and your mind's really synced with the spirit, you're just saying things and you're just going, but you don't realize how how powerful or how in-depth or, or even if you want to say how accurate it was until you take a step back and you go, well, how did I do that? Or where did that come from? You know, so it's important. I always say it's important for us as mediums to give ourselves a, a, a little part of praise and a pat on the back because we need to make sure that what we are receiving and the way that we are conducting ourselves for the spirit is working for them as well so to a sense we've got to give ourselves a well done you know you moved your mind so far out the way that that was a possibility that was you know made forward yeah no it never lose your sense of wonder when we quote a song but that's well, that's why it's an adventure isn't it <laughs> it is truly an adventure um so what i mean i know you can't share any you know there's a lot of things you probably can't share but can you share if if you can like one message that just blew you away, that just really solidified for you that, wow, spirit, how amazing spirit is. Like, can you share anything like that without giving away too much? But, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, do you know, do you know, Laura, so I, uh, for obviously 14 years, it's, it's a very short time. It's a short time if, we, if we're being realistic when we look at other mediums who have maybe done it 30, 40 years right. and so on. Um, we see mediums, we look at mediums, we watch how mediums work, and you know, we, we say, oh, they've done well, we'll take parts out and say that was good, that was wrong. I'm looking at mediumship and spirit communication a little bit differently now, um, because I'm trying to look at the evidence that does prove their life after death, and I'm looking for evidence and proof of their continuation here in the present. So rather than just focusing on, I have your father here, he was a farmer, his name was Joe, and he lived in um, Lincoln, 
get, gather an evidence that is true. That's true. But what do we do with it then? That's where I'm saying what, that only proves he existed. It doesn't prove that he's still here, survived physical death. So what I'm trying to look at now as well, what have you witnessed? What, are, what is going on around your daughter's life? What have you seen since she's passed? And I had a lady who came for a, a reading. Um, it was in Boston. It was in uh, Boston in Watertown. And um, she sat down and I done my thing, gave her my spiel. And I says to her, um, I've got two, two communicators with me just now. I says, I have one who I feel would be your mother. And the other is a young child who is either your grandson or a nephew, but a young boy. And she said, yes, that's correct. So I unfolded the information without going into too much detail about um, the boy's situation when he was here, the life that he lived. And then I says to him, the little boy, I says, well, what would you like to talk about or what would you like to say to her about now? And he says, tell her thank you for bringing my teddy. And I says, okay, he wants me to thank you for bringing his teddy. And she bust out crying. She grabbed her, 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 her pocketbook and she, she picked it up. And inside it, she brought his, his doll. She brought his doll, hoping that he would come to talk about his doll. And so that he knew that she still had his, his teddy, his doll. So to me, that gave me great proof that this young boy, a very young boy in spirit, could see that his grandmother still carried his toy, his teddy. You see, so that showed me that this little boy in spirit was still around and still part of the life here, you know. And spirit will always give us things that maybe we don't know completely at that time or we don't quite know because we're like, you know, in the headlights. And um, I had says to this lady, and this was early on in my development, it says, your father's telling me that you have a mouse in your bin, in your trash bin. And she said, no, no, and she was like, mouse power. She's like, there's no mouse in my house. And I says, well, <laughs> this is what he shows me and this is what he tells me. And if you can take all the information, then just bear this thought in mind. And the next night she came to church and, you know, I could have, you could have blew me down with a feather. She was all excited and she came running up to me and she says, do you remember that you said to me last night that there was a mouse in my bin? And I'm like, oh, you're the mouse lady. And she said, yes. And she went in her back and she pulled out her camera and it was back in the times when you would wind it up and take it and you would take the spill to be developed. She says, I went home, she says, and my husband was going crazy in the, 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 the kitchen. She says, he could hear something. So I went and looked in the bin and look, and she had a photograph of a little mouse looking up at her. You know, <laughs> how, could, how could her father, who was in spirit of knowing that, Surely that must show that he must have been present in her life. He must have been around her. So that, those are the kind of wow moments that really, really get me, you know, especially when, you know, if, if, if maybe someone passes to the world of spirit and they didn't get to be a grandmother, but they knew the, the, the daughter um, was maybe pregnant or expecting a child, but they didn't get to see this child. Yeah. We could easily, you know, say, oh, your, your, your mum's telling me that she, she knows now that you're a mother and she's very, very proud of that. So I was looking at it, well, if you know she's a mother and if you know that she now has a granddaughter, well, can you give her proof of that? Can you prove it to me? And so I tried to work with some form of, well, can you give me her name or what's, what's significant about her? And it's so rewarding when, you know, spirits say, thank her for calling her Jessica after me. The mum's called Jessie. You've named your daughter after your mum. Your, mom, your, your, your daughter's name is Jessica. Yes. So the mother, the grandmother, didn't get to see the child. But here she is able to be part and be present of her life and proven that by talking about the fact that she now carries her name. So I'm trying to look at the proof of life after death rather than yeah. that there once existed. You see? Yeah, that's, so a, that's a great point. Stories, 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 stories. As I'm sure yourself, you, you have ones that you constantly will always remember because it had so much of an effect on you as well. So, so I, I could talk all day. I know, yeah, so you def definitely could do that. Um, I, I mean, considering, you know, talking about the um, grandparents, have you found, I mean, I know it, it, seems, it seems, at least what I've experienced, um, that the grandparents who maybe past maybe a year or two or shortly before a, a young one comes into this world, do you find that they, ha they seem to have a stronger connection with them? I've seen it, you know, and it's, it's something like, I was like, well, this is weird. Why is this? Because bear in mind, we would, we would think the normal, well, 
I never knew them in life, so how could right. I know them now? And I'm like, guys, it's all about the soul. We're soul groups. When, when we're born into each other, it's like we're DNA. We, we know each other. You recognize your own. And absolutely, I've, I've, I've done a reading just yesterday where, the, and that's where I got that experience from, the grandmother had passed. She didn't get to meet the granddaughter, but here now the granddaughter lives a life and she's like, bah, 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 giving her all this advice, talking to her about her, her, her own children. And she's like, I never once met my grandmother, she says, but I have never felt so connected to her the way I do. And she's like, how is that possible? And I'm like, it's strange, isn't it? But if she was alive, she would love you just the same as how she loves you in spirit. It's, it's phenomenal. It's amazing that that connection that they have. So I always it's say fun. to the moms who worry that, you know, their little ones um, didn't get a chance to meet their moms or their grandfather, their dads. The connections are so strong. They, like, they have these, like, I mean, I wouldn't say every every person who crosses over is a guardian angel, but I would say a lot of them are. Yeah, but with, like with the grandmothers or whatever, it's like, the, it is, isn't it? It's like the guardian. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah it's a beautiful connection. It's, some, it's, it's very comforting as well like you know as mothers and uh, you know you know yourself being a mother you can't be there for your kids all the time so I always say to my client especially if like you said if the mother wished that their mom got to meet their children I will say you know you can't be there all the time but if your daughter has a grandmother like your mom in spirit she'll be well protected you know and it is it's like well that's like her guardian angel she's there looking after her she's there loving her teaching her nourishing her just the way she would when she was here. And it's, to me, it's a blessing. It is. It really is beautiful. beautiful thing. Well, thank you like, so much, Dominic. This has been, oh, sorry, what were you saying? It's like, why would they not want to be a part of their life? Just because oh. they're in spirit doesn't mean they can't be physically. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. They can very, very much be a part of their life spiritually, you know, psychically. And um, if they trust that they're there, they're watching over them. And, and a lot of times they do see them. <laughs> Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Even younger, you know, kids, they have, they're so innocent and they're not programmed to know what's right or what's wrong, what's dead or what's alive. It's so innocent for them. So to me, it's a natural thing. You know, see, it's when they get older that maybe it lies dormant, you see. Definitely a strong connection. Well, thank you so much, Dominic. This has been so much fun. I can't believe this went by so fast. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. It's just like you and I just... <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody would like to connect with Dominic for a reading, go to dominicbogue.com. And you can also go to my website, lauraworcester.com, to get uh, tickets for the fundraiser for June 5th uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And it'll be through the, the Zoom platform. And I'll tell you, it's just, it's just as strong, I swear, just as being in person, so it's worth it. It'll be um, supporting two worthwhile um, communities. Okay. Thank you, Dominic. It's Listen, it's pleasure. been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and uh, you stay safe and hopefully we can catch up in August or September. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, Boston definitely misses you. <laughs> and I miss them. <laughs> so we'll, um, everybody, we'll, thank you very, very much for joining us. And um, oh, next week I'll be talking to Janet Nohavik and I'll put that up shortly. Right. Thanks everybody. And I'll post the, the, um, a link, a ticket link for the event next week as well. Right. Thanks everybody. Perfect. Have a great Take day. Care. Be well, everybody.